A traditional saying from the Javanese culture goes like this. A real man owns five things. A house, a wife, a horse, a dagger, and a songbird. In parts of Asia, songbirds are so coveted, poachers receive huge rewards for capturing them from the wild. In Indonesia, particularly prize birds can fetch a price tag of 18,000 U.S. for one single bird. The more wild they are, the more valuable. And with any wild animal, their value is directly linked to their potential for extinction. Indonesia has the second highest number of globally threatened bird species in the world, behind only Brazil. And that threat is directly linked to songbird keeping, which is entrenched in local tradition. Hundreds of species and millions of individual birds are bartered, bred, and bought each year. An estimated one in three Javanese households keeps birds in cages for a collective total of between 66 to 84 million birds. The lucrative trade is also a competition, not just to find the birds by poachers and villagers who can then sell them for big sums, but an actual cage songbird contest. They're called bird song mania. Birds are judged on melody, duration, and volume. In top contests, a prize-winning songbird can win its owners as much as $50,000, which is more than 10 times the median household income in Indonesia. To keep a cage bird and force it to sing on command is cultural and lucrative. There is an ecological impact. When an endangered bird species begins to die out, it starts to forget its song. Bird songs pass from one generation to the next, but when birds are captured, it jeopardizes the ability of new birds to learn important behaviors. Young songbirds learn how to sing by listening to older birds in their flock. They listen, repeat, and refine the songs of an older generation. The pattern is set early, in its first year of life. After that, a bird's song is fixed. Capturing a bird means taking it away from its surroundings and its social structure. Birds are social creatures in nature. But when humans get involved, they change that social structure. The rich and powerful buy single birds to sing only for them, a lonely song heard just by them alone. And when a caged bird sings, its song is meant to be heard by others of its own kind. Songbirds don't want to be alone, and many animals out there, not just birds, are making sounds as a call to end their loneliness. The lone whale song was first detected by a classified underwater surveillance system designed for the Cold War era. The acoustic monitoring by the United States Navy was intended to detect deep ocean vibrations from Soviet submarines. In 1989, a strange, never-before-heard sound was detected. It sounded mechanical, perhaps made by the military. Could it be Russian or perhaps Chinese? The acoustic revelation was tracked for 12 years, starting in 1992. No other sounds with similar characteristics have been identified in the acoustic data from any system in the region where it was first detected in the North Pacific Basin. It couldn't have been a whale, it was thought, as the sound was twice the frequency of a typical whale song. Using the U.S. Navy's sound surveillance system, known as SOSIS, William Watkins at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution tracked the sound. Only one series of these 52 hertz calls has been recorded at a time, with no call overlap, suggesting that, despite initial dismissal that the sound came from a submarine, a single whale produced the calls. 
The species that produced the call is unknown and in recordings from August to February, with most of them made in December and January, the tracks were different each year. Oceanographer William Watkins concluded that the tracks were not related to other whale species, blue, fin, and humpback, which were monitored year-round with the same acoustic measurements. The sound must have come from an entirely new species, one that might be a hybrid, And what the recordings tracked over that decade-long surveillance was the lone whale making the sound never received a response. The whale was called 52, after the frequency of the sound it made. When people hear the sound, they think they're listening to the loneliest whale in the ocean. <laughs> 